Uh, first up is a brand that started out as a laboratory glassware company, then transformed itself to become a kitchenware company and is today has innovated to become a lifestyle brand with a large product range. A bit credit goes out to our speaker for the day, Srivar Kheruka, CEO and MD Borostil Limited, who helped turn the fortunes of the company around by adopting a new low-cost manufacturing business model and diversifying into other segments. Joining Srivar Kheruka is our session chair, Dr. Anurag Batra, chairman, editor-in-chief for BW Business World and Exchange for Media Group, in a special fireside chat on the topic, stirring the pot beyond the Indian kitchen. It's going to be absolutely cracker of a conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Please pay a lot of attention. Let me quickly welcome Dr. Batra. I'll hand it over to you. Ravin, you're deaf, kind, and they say being kind is more important than being wise or being rich, being smart. So kindness is a big attribute. Uh, the, the business owner and the brand owner that I'm going to talk to you has not only talked about con kindness, but has exhibited kindness in more ways than one. Let me welcome Mr. Shivar uh, Kheruka, who's the CEO and MD of Borussia Limited. Uh, Shivar, uh, thank you for joining the Pitch Brand Talk. We're delighted that we're talking to you. First of all, let me start by asking you, a question that I ask everyone I have a conversation. How have been the last 17 months for you both personally and professionally? Uh, well, thanks for having me here. Um, and uh, I think it's been a it's been a challenging but still rewarding you know period of 17 months. And the reason for that is obviously the challenge uh, you know everyone knows. but uh, why why do I say rewarding? Because I think we've had to question almost all the uh, things that we have taken for granted or the, uh, you know, we, we've questioned every aspect of our lives, whether it's professional or personal, you know, why are we around here? What, what, what is our role we have to play in society for our business, you know, for our families. And for this reason, I, I believe that there are many answers which have come out, which will make us better, which will make us a better society going forward and also make us better, you know, companies and leaders as well going forward. Thank you, Shriver. You've been, I, I would say it's been a mixed bag, as you rightly said. We've seen pain, we've seen our lives, we've seen uh, loss of livelihood, but we've also come back to basics. And uh, we start, as you talked about, what is our purpose as an individual? What is our purpose as an organization? And uh, we started to focus on family, health, mindfulness, and most importantly, um, you know, living in the moment. Sometimes we plan very long. Uh, we still continue to that, do that, but we uh, take every day as it comes. Now, let me uh, get into more nuanced conversations about Borosil and brand leadership. Uh, now, Borosil is a business you and your family acquired, right? And then you nurtured it for many years. Give us a sense of the journey at Borosil. So, uh, as far as Borosil is concerned, my family, we bought the shareholding in, uh, back in 1988 from Corning. Corning is even today a global, a global, you know, maybe Fortune 50 company. And uh, I joined the business in 2006. Now, when we joined, when I joined the business, uh, it was very, let's say, inside out focused. We were good at what we did. We are, you know, hardcore manufacturing uh, company. We had a brand. And uh, because the product, uh, like with any brand, I think the first and most important thing is the product quality. And the product quality was always great. What we did not really do that great was really understanding what our customers' needs were. So we had a brand in a very niche market or very niche sense of the word. And I think the, the last 15 years, uh, the first few years was spent in trying to understand what we had, like what really Porcel meant. And then after that, one, when I understood what it meant, I think it was driving a team and an organization culture to becoming customer-centric. And uh, not focused internally, but focused externally. And how do we get the voice of our customers inside the organization? And how do we live and breathe to make our customers happier, give them delight, and you know, th thereby you know, grow our organization? And uh, you know, she were, uh, dare I say, there are a lot of you know mission statement, vision statement, where for many years. Uh, the guiding principle, but, you know, we were following some of them, we were not following some of them. Especially in the last 17 months, Borosil as a business, you as a business leader, really in some way, as I keep saying, it's a compassionate economy. 
became the torch bearers for that uh, passionate economy. Uh, you led from the heart and not just from the mind. So give us a sense of why do brands, both internally and externally, need to lead with the heart as much as they need to lead with the mind? Look, I think uh, the important thing for any person, any leader, any company is to be authentic, okay? And uh, we have to do what we feel is the right thing to do. And if you, if you refer, I guess you're referring to our, you know, what we did for our employees a couple of months ago during the heart of the second wave of COVID, uh, because that was much publicized. Uh, but the, the real thing was that was not a, you know, ad hoc or a random decision. That's really how we've been living our lives or uh, how we deal with our people as well as our customers or uh, you know, suppliers or any stakeholders for many years now. And this was an outcome of that. So I would say that for any brand, it's important to be authentic because you can't pretend to be somebody else or you can't pretend to be someone, uh, you know, some other thing which you're not. And I think what we've learned, we learned a lot about ourselves over the many years and we are now authentic to ourselves. And therefore actions that we take uh, are authentic to that point. It's not a manufactured action to achieve a end objective. It is to be true to what we believe are the value systems that we should be living by. And that was really what was uh, what we have been doing. And it's not a COVID thing. It's been happening a lot before. Okay. You know, uh, Shriver, I've been saying that brands need to appeal to profits, but for them, people and planet should equally be important, if not more important. Now, when it comes to Boros Hill and when it comes to you, you embrace the philosophy of sustainability long before it was fashionable to do it. Uh, for more than a decade, uh, you've been championing sustainability. And so, uh, while it helps your business because the more glass is used, possibly Boros Hill will be used. Uh, but give us a sense of how did you embark on the journey of sustainability and what has it meant for you? So uh, when I was growing up, uh... My, my grandmother would always talk to me about uh, how tough life, where she was from Rajasthan, she grew up in Rajasthan, how tough life was there, uh, what little resources that, you know, we had as a family. And therefore, in order to, you know, you have to use the resources very wisely. And uh, of course, when we were growing up, you know, already people have started talking about global warming. So these, you know, two separate kind of conversations had a big impact on me personally. And sustainability was always an aspect that, uh, you know, I deeply cared about uh, from my own, uh, you know, upbringing, I would say. And therefore, uh, it, it's very natural that, you know, there should be a circular economy, that whatever we use, our products uh, should not end up in a landfill somewhere and just, uh, you know, pollute the earth or end up, you know, as a, you know, as garbage in the ocean. So this was a, it was not a marketing tool. Maybe recently it's become a marketing tool, but it was it was a practical way of living life. Uh, again, coming back to authenticity, this this is what it was, and this is how it should be. That whatever products we use should come back, you know, should should uh, come go back into raw material and again come back as a finished goods, you know. So um, I, I think sustainability is not a, uh, let's say a, a key word. It's the way we have to live our life. Otherwise, our children and our grandchildren will not have much of a you know planet to live on. And that was really, again, the, the, the founding point of, you know, increasing our presence in consumer competing with plastic because glass is 100% recyclable. It's a, it's a fact. You can, you can keep reusing glass. You can melt it and, you know, remelt it and put it in different forms. So if a product doesn't suit your needs, it can be reformed and it's a new product. Whereas a plastic product, once made, formed, you cannot reform it. Uh, you know, it goes into waste and plastic doesn't decompose. It takes many, many or many years centuries to decompose so this was just uh, it was it naturally drew us uh, to that we also had opportunities to enter into plastics by the way we did that also and uh, within a couple of months of doing it we all felt we were doing the wrong thing so as a company even though it cost us some money we actually backed out uh, of, of that uh, of that industry because we you know for us entry into plastics would be logical because it's all our uh, retailers uh, use uh, you know sell lots of plastics and all our end customers use plastic in their homes. So it was an easy extension of our uh, product portfolio, but we chose not to do it. You know, uh, Shriver, uh, again, brands with a purpose, brands who really uh, serve communities has become the overarching theme of the last 18 months. Uh, brands have gone and provided oxygen. Brands have gone and built beds, which were not 
tell us uh, while you looked after your internal stakeholders, and as you said, it was part of a continuing mission. Uh, tell us how how does brand Borosil uh, see itself in a post pandemic scenario? Uh, and health and immunity have taken a new meaning. Fresh food has taken a new meaning. So give us a sense, both in a functional way and in a philosophical way. So, okay, I'll, I'll talk uh, philosophical first. And then because the philosophy then drives down to the functionality. Uh, we always believe that it's our duty to take care of uh, our own people first and those who are associated with us first. And then do something for you know outsiders, or when I say outsiders, then do something for the broader, let's say, community. Uh, so uh, whatever we did first was for our employees, as an example, making sure that we had a setup to deal with even employees, uh, you know, uh, relatives, uh, you know, anyone who was in trouble. We had a team, we had teams across the board, across all our locations. Uh, making sure we had a hospital beds available, or oxygen available, or you know, making sure that they had. Uh, their, uh, you know, the, the, the insurance or even emergency money required, they, they had access within 12 hours, people were getting funding if, if required. Uh, and then, of course, the next step was what happens if, you know, someone passes away. And I think uh, that's already been spoken of. But in general, what we also felt from a broader society point of view, that there were many first responders that needed help. Okay. And these are people such as the police, uh, police or you know, ambulance drivers, or even the people in the morgues who are, you know, taking care of the, you know, the, those who have passed, the, the dead bodies. So we set up uh, entirely, you know, uh, let's call them packets or packages for all of them uh, to get, uh, let's say that because these people are working 12, 18 hours a day, they have no time doing cook food or they're, you know, at home. So giving them care packages every day so that they could eat, um, giving them basic PPEs, which I think, uh, it took a long time, you know, from a bureaucratic point of view to uh, you know, come down to the trenches. So um, I think helping the first responders was something we, we focused our uh, attention on. Uh, and again, the same thing was the same principle applied. We were doing it in areas where we already have, uh, you know, operations. So whether it's Gujarat or Jaipur or uh, Mumbai, Nasik, you know, in, in these areas where we had operations. Um, and that, that has been the, really the thrust of what we have tried to do. Uh, on, on from a pandemic, uh, you know, point of view. Be beautifully outlined the fact that um, the first responders needed help and uh, whatever you could do as a business, as a brand, you did. Now tell us, uh, when it comes to adoption of glass, and you already talked about the fact that it's most sustainable, it's recyclable, uh, it keeps the food fresh, uh, there's no odor. So, Glass has its advantages. Tell us uh, with some numbers, give us a sense of adoption of glass. What is helping it and what needs to be done more to increase the adoption? Because uh, the more the pie grows, uh, the business and the brand will grow. So give us a sense through numbers of the adoption of glass, but what still needs to be covered? So I think uh, the, the, the numbers are very low. So if I look at glass as a percentage in a kitchen for basically storage, let's talk about the area of storage. I would say glass, maybe 5%. Uh, and 95% is steel and or plastic. Okay. And I think here the onus is squarely on us as uh, you know, a leader to come up with uh, products which are attractive and at the same time competitive from a pricing point of view because India is not a very rich country. We have customers who need uh, affordability and how do we drive down the, the pricing of glass to make it competitive so that the, uh, the average Indian household can afford to buy glass containers and not plastic ones. Um, so a lot of product development, product innovation, technology, we are trying to deploy to ar arrive at that uh, end goal. Um, given, I mean, the glass look has certain disadvantages also, but let's be clear, it's heavier than plastic, it can break. So, you know, kids, uh, most people would have a challenge to allow their kids to, uh, to use glass. So those challenges remain. And in those areas, uh, instead of using plastic, we have launched steel products because that's, a, you know, that's a steel also is a very good material from a sustainability point of view, as well as from a health point of view. Steel uh, has many characteristics which are similar to glass, although steel can't be microwaved, which is a disadvantage. And uh, you can't see through steel. 
सो दे फॉर वॉट इन साइड द कंटेनर वॉट एवर यू हैव यू हैव टू ओपन इट टू सी के अंदर में क्या है सो दो डिसएडवांटेज स्टील हैज बट वी आर ट्राइंग टू मेक ग्लास मोर अफोर्डेबल एंड आई थिंक दैट लाइक आई सेट द ओनर इज ऑन आस इफ यू मेक ग्लास मोर अफोर्डेबल फॉर द मास्टर्स आई थिंक दैट फाइव परसेंट नंबर विल बिकम ट्वेंटी परसेंट इन द नेक्स्ट यू नो फाइव सेवन ईयर्स now let me ask you about brand building in a post pandemic world now clearly you advertise you build the brand how has the media mix and the you know brand spend changed in the last 18 months or so yeah i think it's actually this has been dramatic the change i think a lot of it has gone online which uh, because there were even in the pandemic there were many months let's say where uh, you know retail outlets were not allowed to open and but online stores were still allowed some of our products were coming under essential category especially our appliances and therefore uh, it made sense to advertise online rather, rather than tv or because there was no pre going to shops um so i think online as a trend uh, e-commerce sales have increased a lot and therefore uh, the advertising spend has uh, is you know kind of representing that well big chunk has moved uh, towards the online media as well as social media so it could be on amazon which is the point of purchase or it could be on um, you know you know youtube or let's say facebook or instagram those kinds of places uh, so that's one big change let's say from the uh, past uh, the other trend that i think uh, is is here for all to all to see is that uh, you know there has been a decline in circulation of newspapers that at least minus my understanding of, of, of the situation so uh, you know newspaper advertising has taken a back seat Uh, now that may come back depending on how things evolve but i think a lot of the pandemic has driven people also to uh, you know to drop the habit of using a newspaper and moving to a, a mobile phone or you know your computer for uh, reading the news so that itself is a big change earlier we used to do a lot more advertising in in, in print media which seems to have you know taken a back seat tv advertising still i think is is there but again the percentage may have reduced compared to online i just in defense of my fellow publishers i can say that most newspapers have also very robust digital platform some featuring yeah. in the top 10 in comscore so uh, newspapers are not in the business of news and paper they're in the business of news and they have used digitally to be in that business and done well so clearly you can advertise on some newspaper websites yes uh, so i'm going to say the websites have we are still doing websites so you know many news uh, websites are still up up uh, for uh, they're doing very well so i you know I, many of the platforms are excellent uh, and uh, you know we see that the advertising there is increasing but the physical paper has been a challenge okay uh, now let me move into uh, see one of the things we learned in pandemic is never say never the other we learned is uh, less is more so tell me in terms of your uh, marketing spends and advertising spends uh, do we see an increase in your budgets or do we see a increase in redistribution no uh, there will there both so there will be an increase in redistribution but there will also be a uh, increase in budgets because uh, i see this entire trend of pandemic in the short run of course very negative for uh, for all industries or for many industries uh, but cooking from home in my view is a long term trend which has uh, which has come and uh, because of that cooking from home trend i think uh, getting the mind space of the consumer and now it's both men and women earlier cooking used to be uh, more dominated by women but now we see uh, when we see our own you know uh, analytics for our website almost 45% of the people on our website are men now because even men have you know sitting at home uh, become interested to to go into the kitchen and cook which was not traditionally you know uh, done in at least in india so the um, i i think the uh, the requirement to spend money has increased as a as overall number and and uh, you know i i see that will continue so advertising uh, spends will go up for sure sure uh let's talk of 3 5 years these days we tend to talk more in terms of 3 months 6 months 9 months sometime weeks but let me ask you over the next 3 to 5 years uh where do we see borosil as a business headed and uh the borosil brand uh, you talked about steel you know uh, because it's a very strong brand seen as a uh, you know leader brand seen as a, a credible brand seen as a very good product to right uh, at the end of the rest we think between the product and the brand 
where do you see the borosil business in the next 3 to 5 years uh, look i think the business uh, we should uh, look uh, the way we go about things is growth uh, is a very important aspect of our kind of uh, life here and we ho- would hope that in the next 3 to 5 years we at least double our revenues uh, to be specific uh, on on our uh, business uh, as far as a brand if you talk about products uh, you know we have a very strong product development team and if i look at the products we are developing they're very exciting it could it's in the area of appliances home appliances uh, yes yeah, you clearly from a glassware company in the last few years you become a kitchenware company yeah, that's right and you you know you uh, whatever is needed in the kitchen uh, because really the distribution channel is the same the decision maker on buying is the same yeah. uh, and clearly the do it yourself movement which in the last 17 months you know we saw a lot of do it yourself chefs you know Correct. lot of ceos cooking because we were at home more so clearly uh, i understand where you're going uh, yeah keep going thank you so you you were sharing with us uh, and again you talked about the fact that you know um you you're taking more and more space in the kitchen yeah uh, more and so, more usages so build on that frankly uh, frankly we are uh, we are not a top down company we are a bottom up company okay which means to say that um the ideas for growth come from the people who interact with the customers most uh, which is our sales team our sales teams are actually every day meeting six to seven customers minimum okay and they get incredible amounts of information from those customer visits and as a result of that uh, we allow our sales team to drive decision making on product development and that's something that uh, so even i don't know many times what products we're going to come up with in the next 6 months because this is uh, you know it's i let, let them be so in general our vision to be the most customer centric company is something that i would uh, certainly drive but within that how to approach or which product to get into that's something that i don't you know get too deeply involved with uh, we have certain parameters of quality and service that we and aesthetics that we need for a product each product must you know kind of comply to that but outside of that we you know whether to launch a gas stove or to launch a a, a steel burner these are things which i leave to my team to decide uh, in general we'll stay away from plastics because of the uh, you know the pollution and the health hazards of it but uh, outside of some things we won't do there is very little else that is constraining us and all of this with our distribution strength and our uh, you know our team actually the biggest strength is our team frankly uh, yeah. everything, everything else can be replicated and th- that's what i believe is i'm backing and we should double we should at least double in the next 3 to 5 years thank you so much and you know when shri was says that he is put his money where his mouth is and i just want to say that he's being humble he hasn't been talk, talking about it but he was he and his company were among the first to announce employee initiatives of funding children education a two year salary during the second wave for which you were rightly applauded uh, shivar uh, now let me move into um, uh, what were your challenges in the last 16 17 months and how did you overcome them you already talked about the fact that distribution uh, was closed so you had to go online that you addressed uh, but take us through other challenges there were supply side issues uh, and how did you kind of triumph them and move forward look the challenges were many but i i'll talk about the most the most basic ones the ba- most basic challenges say from a production point of view was even getting people to uh, to our production units and uh, even that there were multiple challenges people's families didn't want them to come that was one challenge another challenge is those who were coming the i'm talking about the first wave first phase where it was not clear what covid was even uh, at that time uh, you know they were getting stopped by the local administration because uh, you know they were not allowed to go to factories so even keeping the operations running was a big big challenge uh, there was a lot of fear amongst uh, people in, in you know employees their families customers you know what is this how will it impact us so i would say the dealing with the fear was the biggest challenge for us and uh, i think what we try to do was whenever there's a problem over communicate 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 so i was having um, Uh, you know meetings monthly with my entire team on on zoom A- every person like any uh, we would send mass emails out to the entire borosil group and anyone uh, we encourage everyone to join 
and open meetings where anyone can ask any question as an example like a town hall as well as we call it a town hall so the idea here and also communicating what we are doing so we make a short presentation communicate what we are doing how we're going to keep uh, the company running you know there's a lot of fear many people are losing their jobs not in our company but in other companies so naturally people fear ki ha bhi you know what if i lose my job where will i get money from uh, there was that kind of fear the, uh, there was so livelihood you mentioned at the very beginning there was a fear of life itself uh, which uh, we saw more in the second phase uh, wave than in the first uh, there was the the practical problems of uh, keeping the plants and the supply chain running uh, there we were getting we import some products and even the imported countries uh, you know there was a very big challenge of moving freight um you couldn't travel many employees are not set up to work from home you know most most people in our at least in mumbai uh, have homes which are rather small and there your uh, you, you know your kids are going to school your wife is working you are working your parents are aged uh, you know and all within a small square footage so how do you even uh, get on an online meeting with all this background noise so those small practical things were there uh so you know th- some of them we could solve some we couldn't solve even frankly uh and but i would say that the biggest revelation for me was how people have stepped up and uh, people have really come up with innovative solutions for all these problems and uh, today the company is operating fine even though people are still we still don't have come you know we have no compulsory office even today everybody is allowed to work from home people have started coming to office but of their own of their own you know voluntary will um but i do believe that uh, the we've been able to stretch our thought process to do things which would not have been imaginable 2 years ago uh, and uh, that itself is great absolutely shiva let me ask you my last question before we end this conversation as a leader as an entrepreneur what are your biggest learnings and takeaways from the last 18 months well i think uh, stick to the basics is really the biggest learning right don't over complicate life and stick to the basic um the second thing is uh, be grateful for what you have uh i think all of us obviously it's good to want more but one should just take a step back once in a while and say thank you to god for what you have because we have more than most uh and uh, third thing if i had to pick was uh, communication is probably the most important tool we have at our disposal to keep uh, moving forward and uh, you we assume that people know many things and they assume you know many things so the more we communicate the we come on the same page and once you're on the same page then it's easy to take uh, decisions so i would say these are two or three things that i've learned absolutely shiva i agree with you um that uh, one needs to be grateful for one has uh, while trying to uh, you know get more second never say never third uh, less is more fourth is go back to basics question all assumptions uh, and last but the least uh you know the more you do for others it comes yeah. back to you so thank you so much for living what you say and what uh, doing what you do i just want to uh, say to our viewers that you know uh, shriver when he came back uh, enjoyed the family business uh, there were lots of decisions he took which are really looking good today uh, whether he takes the credit for it or you know he gives it to other for example in 2000 he entered the microwave segment where, where you're a leader now right it's a very big category so congratulations shiver on the success of borosil uh, i'm sure you'll continue to make an impact internally and externally uh, i'm clearly a consumer of borosil uh, in my home and uh, i'm sure uh, we'll do many more conversations with you and understand where you're headed and keep track of the milestones that you and Borussia achieve uh, all the best uh, this is mr shrivar kheruka ceo and md borussia limited talking to pitch and exchange for media at the pitch brand talk those of you who missed the conversation can visit the youtube channel of exchange for media or pitch to view the complete conversation or read it on the pitchonnet.com or exchangeformedia.com sites tomorrow morning thank you so much i'll hand it back over to ravin for the next uh, set of conversations uh, thank you so much thank you thank you so much dr batra and uh, if we still have uh, mr kheruka here uh, we have a few questions uh, that just popped up from the audiences um all you've already answered and touched upon them a little bit but uh, since i have it here uh, i would be very happy if you can answer them so borosil is synonymous with microwaveable bounce 
how have you extended brand salience when you extended your portfolio that's the question uh, so like i said uh, we uh, when the product uh, new product introduction was never top down it was always bottom up so uh, there is no substitute to uh, you know feet on the street we have large sales teams and you know just juta gesai good old fashion juta gesai they would go to the market and talk about our new introductions and we had very good relationships you know we make sure we have very good relationships with our channel partners and most of them were happy to launch or let's say introduce new products from our uh, let's say kitty in their uh, in their retail outlets and uh, so that was one aspect and the second aspect was the quality we we uh, never compromised on any product quality so uh, th- these were two things that we focused on and uh, we were not we were we were patient ki when we have launched a quality product we have good relationships then uh, you know aaj nahi to kal we'll find success and i think we just kept at it and i think that's the reason we've been able to get into new product categories uh, but there's no uh, there's no secret sauce per se it's just you know good old fashion like i said juta gesai hard work right and uh, thank you so much once again mr keruga for being here with us and as uh, dr batra already said you have been doing a phenomenal work in terms of the empathy that you're extending to the whole family of uh, people working at borosil we wish you more power thank you so much once again for joining us it was a lovely conversation thank you